Yeah, those were crazy days. <laughs> The year is 1955, Southern California. A growing demand for manufacturing was breathing life into the automotive industry. My dad was a machinist, you know, and I did take machine shop in high school, and it just came easy to me. I got out of school when I was 17, and I was looking for a job, and uh, so I joined the Navy. You know, did three years, one month and 14 days in the Navy. Got out when I was 21, because I was a kiddie cruiser. I quit working, and I started a machine shop. And that's how come I met Kenny. As a machine shop owner, Jerry worked with many local businesses, including K&N. As K&N's demand for machining services increased, Jerry became a close associate with Ken and Norm. Kenny and Norm both were motorcycle racers, and that's what they did. Norm left Riverside, sold everything, and um, Kenny stayed here with the, with the filter company, which wasn't making any money. Kenny was passionate about his filter business and sought guidance to realize its full-scale manufacturing potential. Ken asked me again, well, why don't you come, why don't you bring the machine shop and come on over and we'll go in together. I said, Psh, what the heck, why not? So I moved my machine shop in there with him and I brought work. In 1995, I bought Kenny out. We got into filters, I mean deep. We knew what was going on and why. We weren't a suit, you know, up in the office that you may never see, you know, or ever shake his hand or ever work alongside. I swept the floors. I made filters. I pleated filters. I mean, you talk about antique way of doing things the way I did it, the way things are done now. Totally different. And not only that, they could do things that I couldn't even begin to do then because we didn't have the machinery, the technology, or any way to do it. With Jerry's manufacturing experience and Ken's passion for high performance, Ken and Jerry developed new manufacturing methods to meet the growing demand for k and filters. The material we used to make in bundles, and we'd put them in a pan, we'd fill it with water, and we'd put it in the freezer and freeze it. And then I'd come in on weekends and cut them into the lengths we wanted on a meat saw. By Monday, they'd be dry, so we'd have filter material. Yeah, those were crazy days. <laughs> Due to the popularity of k and filters, meeting the demand was a challenge. Although it didn't immediately bring him profit, Jerry pressed on, committed to his business and its goals. We started growing at 30% a year, and boy, that was struggling. It didn't take any big wages, just got enough to live on. The thing that I liked about the crew I had, you know, they jumped out on a limb. When things started changing, we didn't wait to catch up. We did it first. Finally, it turned around. If you have good people in a company, and we, and we have a good product, I mean, it makes a difference. As k and continued to expand, Jerry surrounded himself with reliable and dedicated staff to ensure that k and would always be an industry leader. As k and grew, and you had the, the new sort of a program going when, he, when Steve Rogers, Steve Williams, and these people came in, things changed a little bit. What I really enjoyed is seeing things change and the things that they did. So, you know, and there were good things, you know, good things like that come out of it, you know, where you're known worldwide and people know that that filter is good. With a K&N, if you run over the, over the road and not off road, you never need another one. You know, the last Escalade that I traded off and sold had 160,000 miles on it. I put the filter in there when I bought it and uh, never touched it. And it wasn't just air filters. K&N went on to invent the world's first cold air induction kit for fuel-injected vehicles. Well, the uh, performance kit, you know, uh, it was a good product for us because it's in line with high performance and what we do and what we stand for. And, uh, and it brought in a lot of dollars. Under Jerry's leadership, K&N ascended to the top tier of the aftermarket performance industry. Despite great success, Jerry never lost sight of the underlying passion he always had for the K&N brand. You know, we really had a good thing going. And we were enthusiasts. And we didn't run the company to make a lot of money, even though it did. And yeah, you, you, you know, you strive to do that, but we run the company because we love what we were doing. Yeah, it was a heck of a ride. <laughs>